Hello everyone, YG036SX, we come to you with more Apple goodies. Not too long ago, we got to the guts of this thing. Now, we must rebuild. But there's something a little bit interesting about this battery, and, and for the love of Pete, if you're going to take a drink every time I say I'm not used to this, well, don't. You might die. But, oh, hold on here. Now I already, now I already did it. There's something different about this battery compared to the other ones I am used to. It's officially rated as a 6 volt battery, not a 12. So it looks like it's kind of like set up like a load balancing where you have two banks of 6 volts. And before we continue with anything else, we went on a small shopping spree with our good friends at Mauser that still don't know how to package batteries, but whatever. Part. If they're thicker, it's hardly a, hardly a difference. Uh, and it looks like exactly the same length, so I think we should be home free. It is an H HHR210A. Got ten of those. And as always, I recommend going to places like Bowser or DigiKey. I believe even Newark, because uh, they always rotate their stock. They always know what they have. Nothing against Amazon or eBay, but you know anybody can sell on those platforms. You just don't know what you're getting yourself into. Not everybody is transparent as I am on their eBay purchases. So I think the secret here is within the cardboard, and we're just gonna figure out how to split this thing. if that's even what we do with it. Yeah, it doesn't look like we entirely do that, so... First thing is first, I'm going to handle this like anything else. I'm going to mark the polarity. So that, all that requires is a near permanent marker. There's one. It looks like somebody kind of did it already. Uh, so this, uh, on this side, is the negative. Although, albeit they uh, mislabeled it. That's negative. There you have it. So we at least got that going for us. I'll take a picture of it before we do much of anything else. That's when the real fun begins. In this battery, we do have a little bit more work to do with it than what I am used to. Okay, take another drink. But that's for good reason. Usually I don't get them this corroded. But this one is very corroded. So there'll be a little bit of work on that front. Like anything else, like the vinegar treatment should work. And now that we got our picture coming out of the printer, let's see how they connected this thing. And I know I'm off camera, but I don't mean to be. The first thing is first, I'm going to sever the link that is right here. So I'm just going to take a no more than a mere ordinary flathead screwdriver and try to achieve that goal. I don't know how well it's going to work, but damned if I'm not going to try. Get through the many layers of corrosion. Get through the bloody many, many, many layers of corrosion. And I still can't seem to grab on anything here. Oh, disconnected something. 
I don't know why it disconnected, but not what I wanted. Each. So, I'm going to have to do this a little bit differently. So, i got to get underneath that spot weld. I think this, uh, if we get this needle nose under here, I think we can do it. You just gotta do it. There we go. If you break this, I think we could get around it. There was a person that made a video years ago that they rebuilt one of these out of double A batteries. They didn't show how to do it. Well, yeah, that's pretty much it. Just We just severed the link. That was not my intent here, but... We'll throw an S on it because that's a spot weld. I'll know what it is. So we got one side, in theory, separated. The other side's going to be a lot tougher because it's in the middle. But we got this cardboard we got to do something with so that's going to be next if it doesn't prove to be an impossible nightmare well you know what they say think differently or is it think different I'm not sure I don't remember which uh, what the slogan was at the time for Apple but it's definitely different Very, very sticky. Okay, so... Cardboard is proving to be very, very difficult to work with right now. A little bit surprised by that. But there's absolutely nothing, I don't think so anyway. Yeah, so it is just a protectant. And now you can see where, well, as soon as I show you, you can kind of see where that other spot weld is located. So we got to somehow get to that and separate that. We got to sever that. What I'm going to do... I'm going to throw an S on that as well, just to get that out of the way. I'm not going to say it again, but this is, this is unique. It truly is. But, I mean, if it works, it works. Yeah, look at this. This is... Uh, so it looks like it just kind of joins into one, which is very, very odd, but, oh. Yeah, as you see on the cardboard, you can see where my finger is, it points there. And then the spot welds just meet up there. So that that's unique. Kind of like a load balancing, it looks like. So right now, I'm just putting my needle nose pliers underneath there to see if I can separate that. Oh, I can. Kind of. Yeah, I'm getting it to pull up. Oh, I broke it off. So now, this should be free, or is it? It is attached to the third spot. Right there is another spot weld, it's a negative. So we're gonna put one right there. Kinda like that this is all coming together in one piece, so 
and there are layers upon layers of corrosion on this one as well. It seems like that's not unusual for these to do that. Uh, damn you, Apple. Big different. We're free. So after all of that, this is what I have left. I'm going to have to give that a vinegar bath one way or another. And somehow get this protected off. So we're going to keep working on that. It's a very, very sticky protectant. But at least it does the job. So and that's one thing we could tip our hat about. Hang our hat about. What do you want to call it? And I do realize there's probably a few better tools to do this with than this rear screwdriver, but I'm going to take what I can get. Yeah, there's so much corrosion on this, it's like, I don't know if I'm going to reuse this. We might have to find a different solution. My goodness, yeah, this uh, cardboard is sure taking no prisoners. It's a man on a mission. Well, that's what's left of it. Yeah. So, there's a couple more things. We, we need the thermostats off of the battery. And I think there's going to be a little bit of bad news on this one. Look at what just happened. Our thermostat separated. And unfortunately, if where it's separated is where we're going to get screwed. And, oh, this is a, oh, it's a 50. Well, we're going to take this one off the rest of the way anyways, and we'll see if we can salvage this. But one of the legs completely broke off. Yeah, one of the legs, it's, uh, that's not going to be salvaged. So, I don't think we're going to quite be able to complete this one in this sitting. Well, at least uh, not for me anyway, for, for the viewers here at home or work or wherever. This will be a complete video. Yeah, let's look at that. It, it just kind of just fell apart. So, I think, I think the best solution at this point... Yeah, let's look at that. It, this corrosion is just fierce. Yeah, so I'm going to order the right ones. The, these are 50 Celsius thermostats. Now, you could say, well, do you need them? Well, no. But on this channel, we try to build things by the book as much as possible. So I am going to order the right ones. And we'll get them here. And we'll go as far as we can without them. But in the meantime, let's clean up what we can. I mean, this is a, a mean corrosion problem here. And some broken solder joints, but that, that's all right. It happens. So this will just be this will just be a vinegar assignment. I'm not gonna put that part on camera because well, that'll be that'll be boring. But once we get the vinegar part done, we get this thing soaked, then we will get as far as we can building the cells. So there'll be two places that we can't do that on the account of our uh, thermostats being pretty much disintegrated. So I'm going to get this in the bath, and then we will move on to our next steps. Okay, we're soaking. And yeah, the vinegar is going to town. We can still do some stuff in the process. 
we can assemble our pack. So we shall do that. And it looks like it's mostly straightforward. You can tell here there are connectors across each and every battery. So we can construct most of it. Just gotta get the rubber bands off. That'd be nice. So. And you also notice that I am using nickel metal hydride batteries. These were just as cheap and you can do these just fine provided you use all nickel metal hydride batteries. It's actually a little safer and it, I think in some parts of the world the nickel cadmiums are it's illegal to sell them in certain parts of the world but I could be wrong on that. Especially like the European countries, I think, is what I'm. We have a feeling that you'd run into some trouble if you try to sell the old nickel cadmiums in those parts of the world. Let's join these bad boys together. Yeah, hopefully a little bit uh, better than I'm doing. Get some of this corrosion out of here. This is just something else. Steve Jobs would have never let this happen. Yeah, to be fair, I don't know. I think Steve was... Steve Jobs was not with Apple at the time, so I can't really say that it's his fault or not. And, well, if it was, I can't really blame Apple for that. That's uh, just the nature of these batteries. After they sit, they leak. You can see Mr. Jobs' successor there, on the other hand, I think he would cut corners, but we're not going to rag on Apple any more than I already am tonight, so put that conversation to rest. All right, so I need, a, I need something to cut this nickel strip with. is getting messier every day. All right, we're off to a wonderful start. That nickel strip has suddenly disappeared. Oh, never mind. Misplaced. We've upgraded to misplaced. Let's see how this goes. Density, I think, is turned all the way up on that. I could be wrong. But we are now going to... If you haven't figured it out already, we are going to spot weld. And I made this one. It's got a crease in it already. Oh, we're off to a wonderful start, aren't we not? If I haven't mentioned it already, if I will drop a link in the description for the thermostats. They are a phone only company though, so do bear that in mind. They really got the PCI compliance thing going. But, you know, the company is nice and fast. It's SNS Electronics. I will give them credit for that. I will, I will deal with the aggravation of going through phone or email if they're that fast. And I will say the woman I usually deal with is named Karen, of all people. Totally not a Karen, though. 
in the tradi in a stereotypical sense. So very responsive, very respectful. Nothing but nice things to say about her. And I'm a small potatoes customer for them. Okay, so we are going to There we go. We are definitely spot welded and this thing is getting hot. And that piece is a little short, so let's move on to our next uh, nickel strip. Make this one a little short. No, it should be all right. Yeah, that one sounds a little questionable, but but there you have it. That's the easiest part of this plan is concluded. So now, all we gotta do is we gotta join forces here. So that one's pretty good. There's that one. That's how I need this on right this very minute. I'm going to let this thing cool down for a little bit. Four and five. It'll be done here shortly. All right, so we got our batteries, our line of cells anyway, have been created. So now, I'm not sure if I want to stop it here or do what I can and then stop. I'm not sure how I want to do this. Let me go look at this real quick here. I think we can do most of this right now with what I have. There's a section right there and that's positive to negative. Another thing you could do too, at least on four of these batteries, if you really are worried about shorting things out, you can put a small piece of heat shrink or electrical tape you can put it in between not in the center one so much but but four out of five ain't bad and just put some heat shrink on there that way you have some protection that way you also have well it looks a little bit nicer to some point anyway so I'm going to do that but I don't think that part's mandatory and also I always have a fear of shorting things out so I don't want to run that risk so let us go take out our heat shrink these batteries are 17 millimeters wide I believe so if you get in the neighborhood of 17 or 20 or 23 You'll have a nice, tight 
tight fit. Oh, look at that. I even have some orange 23. The downside is, if you're from the United States at least, is the wait time. Because you gotta... Unless you're going to use 30 millimeter, that's definitely a lot quicker, but... But the only place I've only been able to get orange heat shrink from in this size of 23 millimeter is straight from China. So you'll be waiting if you do pursue this. Now the stuff I've worked with so far has been good quality. So I don't remember the seller's name, but... Now, if you really want to make it look pretty, you'd go across all the way. You cut enough of this stuff out to, to cover the entire cell, but I'm not going to go crazy about that. I'm just... Just enough to protect those uh, in the center there. That's, that's my end game here. Now, I find a heat gun. Now, somebody may say, can I use something like 40 millimeter or 50 millimeter? And the answer to that question is, I don't recommend it. So at that point, you'll be, you'll be really pushing it for something that's a little too big. And you don't want to do that. Oh, behold, I think maybe these are in the wrong package because this is a 23 millimeter heat shrink and it is not fitting. Oh, well. I might have it in the wrong package. So, all right, I'm not gonna have you go through that again, so I'll just go get some offline, and once I find 30 millimeter, then we'll continue on. All right, like I said, we got shrink wrap for days. Just make sure I don't have the wrong part here or anything. I'm gonna measure 16 and a half, so that, I don't know why that didn't fit. All right, I'm not gonna ask questions at this point. I start asking questions, then I'm gonna get hung up, and I don't want to get hung up. So let's not get hung up today. But with heat shrink, you don't want to go more than double the size of what you're doing. So otherwise, it's only gonna shrink down so much. It's not gonna look very good. Not that anybody's gonna generally see this, but this stuff. Uh, I am just having an off day with this. Maybe I should quit while I'm ahead. There we go. Like I said, I'm not going for Superman here. I'm just going for protectant, so. And this kind of stuff I have for days. If this was an 18650 cell, then it would cover the thing perfectly. But these are not 18650 cells. These are a little bit longer than that with in their combined status. Oh, come on. I'll just leave one unwrapped. All right, so a little bit of good news. If you're doing the shrink wrap route and you don't care about perfection, this stuff is readily available in the United States. So, I'll hold it as close as I can, and let's shrink. The idea is you hit from the outside, and then once your outsides are shrunk, you'll work towards the middle. 
pretty straightforward. There's one. Best I can here. It's not going to be perfect, but last but not least, the fourth one. There you have it. So we got four cells that are mostly connected now. Now, if you want to be overprotective or over overkill, let's make sure that all five of these have voltage. And I don't know how charged these are, so but coming from Mauser, I think they'll be close to the 2.4 combined. Some of these are read negative because I have it, it's not all these in the right orientation. 2.5, 2.59, 2.59, 2.59, 2.59, 2.59, 2.59, 2.59, 2.59, 2.59, 2.59, 2.59, 2.59, 2.59, 2.59, 2.59, 2.59, 2.59, 2.59, 2.59, 
is older than I am and originally housed uh, or held the old Apple IIe's uh, from my home school. Remember those? Probably later in the world max. But with everything going Chromebook and portable, they don't need these carts anymore. Only for five dollars. Can't go wrong with that. Okay, so why are we as far as we can go? I shall show you. So there's a strip here that joins these two, and there's a strip here. So that's four out of the ten joints. We got our fuse or thermostat number one, thermostat number two. That's eight out of your ten. Then you have your two actual battery connectors, and of course this one in the center, and that's all of them. So at this point, I know for you it's going to be instant, uh, instantly going on to the next thing. But for now, for me, as it stands, this is going to be the end of this uh, section because I got to wait on those thermostats and. Probably going to be a couple days on that, uh, at least the company, by default they use two-day shipping, FedEx, and they get stuff out the same day, so that's that part's nice, so. But, until then, you know, that's uh, kind of coming to the end here, so we wait on thermostats and we see what happens with our cleanup and go from there. do anything else here, I will admit that I made a mistake in this video. And I caught it early enough to the point where it wasn't going to be a problem. If you take a look at the original cells, you'll see it. Let's see if I can get the polarities here. Because this is where the, uh, we take a side-by-side -side look. This set is how I had it hooked up originally. Look at your center cells. See a difference? If you did, well done. Don't worry, it's not a quiz. So what I have to do is I have to hook these positive to positive. Now, I know they in grade school or middle school they taught you, no, 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 you don't hook positive to positive, it'll never work. Well, tell them your old pal I8036SX and the Apple Corporation debunk that theory. Now, in the case of alkalines or those ordinary batteries you buy off the shelf, yeah, probably not, but this is a Nikid system. It looks like there's some load balancing, so in those cases, in this case, that is how it's built. Had I left it that way where it was just one big 12-volt cell, who knows what would have happened. At minimum, absolutely nothing. At worst, we have a dead system. We have bad AC adapter. Possibly even a fire. And we don't want any of those things. We don't want to blow up any retro systems on this channel. Now, I feel bad when I have one here that's so far gone that I can't repair it. I, I don't like doing that. That's just... Uh, I don't get any joy out of that, and I know my viewers don't, and I know I get downvoted every time I get one of those beyond repair, cracked up laptops, and I don't want to do that. Yeah, this feels so weird, but it definitely is possible. Because lithium ions, I'll show you another example where this, uh, your lithium ion batteries, the vast majority of them have some kind of load balancing. Ah, come on. Oh, there's got to be a thing on there. Let's see if it flattens the best I can here. It looks like I mostly got her. All right, so.
Now we are sitting flat, so we should be able to do something with it. I am going to do something a little bit different from what I have done, or what Apple has done, is where they just spot weld in the center like that. I think we're going to have a very hard time doing that, so I am going to solder some wire in the center of this hole. And where this is going, that, that's where I want to solder the wire. But let's get a light in here, because I'm kind of having a hard time seeing. There we go. That's much better. Tell you what, this feels so weird doing this. That's because I don't do it hardly at all, but that's the original design. Oh, wait a minute, I'm pressing the wrong button. Yeah. All right, so as promised, I was going to show you another example where positive to positive would apply. I don't know if I could see it off of this one. Uh, yeah, so maybe it's not this one, but hold on, I gotta look at this to make sure. Maybe that's not a good example, but. What happened to my other Armada 7700 battery? That's a good question. Okay, this looks like a... Okay, I think we found something that we can uh, work with here. Yeah, so if you take a look here, this is a, from a compact Armada 7400. And if you notice, we have positive to positive, and then it goes negative to negative. So. That's a little bit different application, but that is a form of load balancing that we all see in most of your semi-modern day batteries. So, yes, it is. if your science teacher comes back and marks you down on a question saying you can never hook a positive to positive or negative to negative, again, you can show them this video by your old pal 980386SX and, and educate your teacher today. Or whenever you show this uh, <laughs> yeah well, anywho now that we got that problem corrected not sure how I want to go about this next if I want to solder the wire first and then do the thermostats which by the way SNS electronics you guys are wonderful as always and I ended up going with the THPV50. There's a THPN variant out there, although I'm not sure if it comes with the 50 Celsius variant, excuse me. It, they definitely do make it for the 70 degree Celsius variant. But I do need the center cells to do that, so I think we're gonna do the, the soldering right now. I was trying to think how I want to do this. Yeah, so this goes a thermostat. Something like that. So, <laughs> dang. Yeah, that is just all sorts of death right there. So, all right, so let's warm up the soldering iron. With the magic of video editing, we'll continue on to the point where I do the soldering. A second problem has been detected. See, when we put this cover on, I, although I did cover it with tape, it's only going to go so far. And if these leads would ever come off or anything like that, we have a problem. We got workarounds. Don't worry. We are full of solutions here today. We got to use a little bit of elect the old liquid electrical tape. And a little disclaimer. Oh, it's not pretty. It's not by the book. Well... We're going for functional here. Pretty is a secondary. So that should do, I would think. Oh, oh, we gotta get a little bit more over here. Yep, got a gob on my desk here, but that's all right. 
we will use it for gobbery. And we'll probably do, I don't think I should probably get it this side too. Well, let me look here. Do we have to get that side? Uh, yeah, I think we're gonna get this side too. We'll just goop this up a little bit. Yes. Let's be real, it's not gonna hurt nothing if we goop things up a wee bit. All right, we've been gooped. Now I just need like some paper towels or something and I don't have anything near me, so I shall go get some. Okay, so that is now nice and dry. Well, at least the table's cleaned up. I don't know if the, the mess that I created on the battery itself is quite to the point of being dry, but it will be in a half hour tops. Yeah, I think it's the instructions say let her dry for a half hour before you move anything around. No, I did the rest of the packaging on this, but we got a bunch of stuff in a language other than English or Spanish. It says may irritate skin. Well, oops. It is flammable. Fumes catch fire. Yeah, I want to say that uh, a half hour is going to be good on this. And now, while we do that, the next thing I gotta figure out, well, I gotta figure out two things. I could just as easily bring that stuff back out for this, but I'm going to cheat some more. And hopefully not create too much of a problem because I forgot one little spot in the center here. And for some of the, the Mac enthusiasts that say, you're doing that wrong, what are you using that tape for? Well, compact LTE laptops if you ever take apart their batteries, you'll see it real quick. They do absolutely use a solution similar to what I just did to protect things. So, little uh, food for thought there for anybody who wants to criticize my homework there, and that's your God-given right if you do. I don't think I thought my wire thing 100% through, but oh well. There we go. So the wire goes something like this. So now, and I have, this is going to be an idea I'm going to have offline. I'm going to figure out how to get this soldered on here and to the point where it just doesn't stick up. Because I part of the idea is that we do want to keep this cover if we uh, if we can at all. So let me think this through. And then we'll go from there. All right, we got her together, but holy mother, it's not pretty. So I, somehow, some way, we gotta squeeze all this in here. And hopefully, squeeze it in there, I should say. I don't know how it's gonna work, but I don't know this part's gonna be offline too, and that's kind of a cheating moment here. What do they do here? That's just, okay. That looks like that's a part that needs to be taped up some more. So, let me see what I can do. Or I should just cut that part out. Yeah, so there's a part that I just need to cut a little bit more out of. I think that's what we're gonna do here. Or fold it over. Oh, that's an idea. I don't know if that'll work, but we'll try. I'm gonna fold it over as flat as we can and hope for the best. Alright, so we gotta hack this thing more. So, we are at the right orientation. I don't think we have any shorts. And somehow, I gotta cram all this uh, the wonderful guts of this thing into the battery. Yeah, 
yeah, I don't think I quite uh, built this the way I should have, but probably something I could fix if I have to. But the terminals are just not going at nothing. It's really working the way it should here so far, unfortunately, but that's uh, the way it's going to go. Yeah, there's a... Okay, that's interesting. So I think I understand the point of the, where these little spacers come from now. Or I got these wrong, because I got a foot that is uh, in the way here. And I can handle this in one of two ways. I can just break that foot off. Or I gotta think of something else. It may have even made this battery backwards. I'm not entirely sure. That's, that's what it's starting to look like. So I think... Yeah, I did it on both sides. I think the thermostats are backwards, but... I think we can just break those tabs off and I think it'll be fine. I know it's uh, not cool, sure, but we're going to do it. Tell them about uh, those two tabs, of course. Now, that one was already broke, so, eh. This one's being a little resilient little bugger right here. Yeah, broke off where I didn't want it to break off. That's all right. Let's see if it's enough. I don't think it's going to be enough. Very little room for air space-wise on this one. I didn't realize that till just now. And I got one side in. Now I gotta break those tabs off on the other side. Guess you don't need me to hear me complain about this so once these tabs are off once I got this all fit, fitted together then we will continue well to call this monstrosity ugly would be an insult to ugly but it is together and at the end of the day we have six volts so we got the two most critical pieces I think I can shove this thing into a laptop and in theory it should power on so Let's shove this thing into a laptop. I don't know if I want to get to this one, but well, we'll see. We got one other PowerBook 165C if we blow this one up. Alright, how does it go in? It goes in like so. Oh, I can't, right? Okay, well, oh, it goes in like this. Here we go. There's a door I don't have on this, and it is a very tight fit, which I kind of expected. All right, power this sucker on, and we're off. hard drive you can do this
little bit of a stiction problem on that guy. IBM hard drives had that stiction problem, but I apparently did. These things are slow, but you know, it'll get there. And I don't even know how to tell on this how the battery. Oh, here it is. So. It. I don't know if you can see that. Let me see if I can turn this light off. You see, right in the bottom corner, bottom left corner, you'll see a battery meter. And it looks like it's about half full according to our... Oh, here we go. So there's another one up here. And it says it's half full. So it looks like this battery is definitely doing what it's supposed to do. Now the question is, will it take a charge? This is where I gotta find a power brick. Uh, maybe. Well, I gotta dig that up too. 